Hi, I'm Ray Young. I'm an emeritus professor from the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And today I'm going to be talking to you about the theories of scent. And, and I've designed the sequence of lectures uh, as shown here, a six-part sequence. The first part I'll talk about the chemistry of odorants today, then the chemistry of natural odorants, perfumes and physiology of smell, molecular shape theories of smell, the vibrational theories of smell, and then the combinatorial odotope theory of smell, as well as a summary. Uh, in today's lecture, we'll be talking a little bit about basic chemistry. And when the Nobel Prize winning, uh, famous Nobel Prize winning physicist Richard Feynman was asked, what single sentence would best encapsulate all science so far if it were to be the sole surviving scrap of all we knew? And he replied, the world is made of atoms. Now, if he'd have been allowed a second se se sentence, I would suggest that he might have added, and the atoms bond together to make molecules. And with this, the basis of life and perfume oils are formed from carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur, but mainly from carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, as we'll see. Uh, today I'm, I'm going to give you a, a brief overview of the uh, es essential oils or odorants. They aren't always all essential oils, but the odorants are usually volatile oils that evaporate easily and give off characteristic aromas. Uh, they're produced by many, but not all, plants. And they're in all parts of some plants, sometimes in these specialized ducts or glands, which I've shown at the bottom right, a small duct, and you know when you break up a peppermint leaf, you get a stronger aroma and you're breaking up these ducts. Uh, essential oils definition strictly is steam distilled plant material, uh, but we'll be using it in a more general sense as odorants. And odorants for perfumes are of uh, several natures. Uh, they're either natural or synthetic uh, volatile organic compounds. The, and, and they occur as aliphatic hydrocarbons, which in plants are uh, terpenes, and they're synthesized as terpenes in plants. We also get aliphatic hydrocarbons from petrochemicals. There are also aromatic uh, compounds, hydrocarbons, and these are produced naturally in plants and are synthesized uh, from pet petrochemicals as well. So let's look at these a little more closely. The aliphatic hydrocarbons are basically just chains of bonded carbon atoms as straight, branched, or cyclic structures. And I don't want to go into too much detail, but it did give you a basic understanding which it would be valuable when we're talking about the theories of smell. The, uh, the, the straight chains are, are cyclic branch structures, contain double bonds, which I'll show, and they can contain some other atoms such as oxygen, sulfur, nitrogen and phosphorus. Mostly you'll see oxygen as a, uh, another component in the uh, uh, odorant molecules. I've shown here a very simple structure of propane. You can see it has three carbons uh, with hydrogens attached. And on the right is hexane, a larger, uh, longer chain with six carbons with hydrogens. And shown at the bottom left is propanol with, with a substituted oxygen, which contains a hydrogen. And on the right is hexene, which is a, a six carbon structure, but contains a double bond. Now we have these simple rules that carbon always has four bonds, hydrogen one bond, and oxygen two. And you can see in propane up in the top left that each carbon has four bonds. It's attached to another carbon, uh, and three hydrogen at, at the end, three hydrogens at the ends of that two chain, and uh, two hydrogens at the center. And this similarly for hexane, each carbon has four bonds. And you can see just the hydrogens just have the one bond. Whereas oxygen shown on the lower left contains uh, a bond to the carbon as well as a bond to the hydrogen, the bond not shown there. So these simple rules of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen apply uh, universally and give us an idea of how these structures are formed. I mentioned we also can have uh, branched or cyclic structures. Again, I've shown hexane at the top, 
six carbon structure and sometimes hexane is shown simply as this zigzag structure at the top right where there's a carbon assumed at the two ends and then each uh, kink or bend in the structure represents a carbon so that one at the end would be one and then there's one two three four kinks is four and the other end is uh, is, is six, makes six. One, two, three, four, five, six carbons. Um, a branch structure is shown at the bottom where uh, hydrogen is removed from the main chain and then we have what is called a methyl group, another carbon with hydrogens attached. And now uh, I've used that simplified structure shown the, uh, to show the structure of cyclohexane, a cyclic structure. You can see that the chain, basically you remove two hydrogens and connect them together to make a ring structure. And these ring structures can also have a double bond, as in cyclohexane, versus the basic structure of cyclohexane. What I'd like to do now is show a model, a molecular model of the, this structure, so that you can see it as it really exists in nature. And shown here is a cyclohexane structure, and you can see that it isn't this flat train, chain carbon. In three dimensions, the carbon is a tetrahedral structure, meaning it has four, four uh, different orientations for the bonding. And the blacks are the carbon, and the whites are the hydrogen atoms. And you can see that the, this can move around in nature. Now, uh, we can also make a cyclic structure out of this by just removing two hydrogens, and I'm going to remove one here. And uh, then this structure, with another hydrogen removed, can be reattached, and then you have this cyclic structure of cyclohexane. And you can see this ring can move around, it has flexibility uh, in nature. And so this is the structure of cyclohexane and hexane uh, as the straight chain carbon. Again, the hexane would be just this long chain stru structure such as this with a hydrogen here. Okay, we also have aromatic hydrocarbons. And we have to distinguish the word aromatic from uh, uh, aromatic uh, odorants. Uh, many of these aromatic type chemical structures often had aroma and so they became associated with the word. For example, uh, clove is uh, a eugenol structure and vanillin, uh, vanilla flavorings uh, in nature is a vanillin structure. Uh, and we'll go into that a little more detail later. But these uh, cyclic bonding carbon atoms uh, contain alternating or conjugated double bonds. In other words, I've shown the structure below for benzene. And you can see here on the left, very left, is you have these double bonds as we discussed for the, uh, the other aliphatic structures. But in this case, they form a conjugated structure within a ring of cyclohexane, which is now a benzene structure because it has these alternating double bonds. And these become uh, conjugated and they form a electron cloud both above and below the ring. So it forms an extremely uh, rigid structure. And so a benzene or aromatic structures uh, of this nature have a very stable ring structure. And on the right, they can also be substituted. And you see in the ring is just a circle to show this sort of uh, 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 the structure of the uh, uh, cloud of electrons above and below the ring. And uh, it can have uh, substitution, such as uh, the oxygen or the hydroxyl group shown here uh, in the structure of phenol. Now let me just show you uh, a structure with the double bonds. And you can see here, this is, would be uh, you cyclohexane with these uh, double bonds. You can see here, these are the double bonds and a single bond, but they're alternating. And they alternate back be across the structure to give you this conjugated structure. And you can also see this is very stiff. The structure is not flexible like the cyclohexane and cannot take on those different conformations. And I've shown here an attachment of a oxygen and hydrogen to make the phenol structure. So this is what an aromatic structure is in terms of chemistry. And it isn't necessarily odor odorous, but you know many of these aromatic hydrocarbon structures have, have a, an aroma. 
So terpenes, then, in nature, uh, are aliphatic hydrocarbons, not aromatic hydrocarbons, and they're synthesized in nature by building molecules and, and units of five carbon atoms. So a monoterpene will have 10 carbon atoms, diterpenes 20, and triterpenes 30 carbon atoms. And they can be very simple structures or with lots of uh, substitutions and double bonds. And I've shown a couple of these at the bottom of the slide. Uh, these are two citrus terpene odorants, uh, the one geranale is a lemon odor and you can see here it's a long, a long chain structure and the kinks in the, in the structure are where the carbon atoms exist and it shows several double bonds and you'll note too that at the very end is a double bond uh, to an oxygen. Now in this case it's not a, a, ox, a hydroxyl group which has an oxygen hydrogen. In this case it's just two double bonds or one double bond to oxygen. And this is considered an aldehyde group, which I'll talk about in just a minute. The other structure is it's still also an aliphatic. It doesn't contain those conjugated double bonds in the ring, but it has some branch structures and some double bonds. And this is limonene, and this is the piney turpentine odor. So we're starting to see what nature is building from these aliphatic hydrocarbons. I'd mentioned just previously in the slide that that aldehyde group, that double bonded oxygen to carbon, is a characteristic structure in many uh, different organic molecules. And it's called a functional group, and we'll talk about a couple of other functional groups in a minute. But the aldehyde group uh, is shown here, and it ha if it's a very short chain structure, for, such as formaldehyde or acetaldehyde shown below, they can usually ha are rather malodorous. Uh, so they're not useful in perfumes. However, the longer chains of these aldehyde structures, as shown in this next slide, can be uh, very, uh, very aromatic in the sense of a pleasant odor. So uh, you can see here the, the chain, they all have an aldehyde group at the right end of the chain, and then the left, left is just a methyl group or a carbon, and the kinks represent each carbon atom. So if it's only seven of these carbon atoms linked to the aldehyde, it's a herbal green odor. And then you can see as the number of carbons uh, in the aliphatic chain goes up, you get different aromas, quite distinct. Eight is orange, nine is rose-like, 10 is more of an orange rind, 11 gives you a very clean odor, 12 is sort of lilacs and violets, and finally 13 is a waxy grapefruit type aroma. So this is very intriguing, but it shows the comp uh, how complicated uh, perfume chemistry and essential oil chemistry can be in terms of defining the aroma, and this is part of, of how I'm going to develop these lectures on smell. Now it's interesting here that the C10, carbon-10, and carbon-11, and carbon-12 aldehydes are some of the uh, aldehydes that were added to Chanel Number no. 5 to give it that sparkle, bright, uh, effervescent flavor uh, aroma from uh, Chanel number no. five and these aldehydes are utilized in many different perfumes to give that that sparkle that freshness uh, to the perfume here are some of the other functional groups that exist in plant in aliphatic structures and you can see the functional groups have a, a, a profound influence on the uh, the aroma of a particular compound uh, I've shown alcohol, That's we showed that in, in several of our previous compounds, the OH, uh, which is attached to an aliphatic chain or an aromatic ring, a benzene type ring. And in plants, the uh, alcohols uh, that are greater than three carbons are often sweet and strong. We have menthol, which is minty, and geranol and linalol, which are terpenes, have fresh floral flavors, uh, fragrances. Then acid has a distinctly different uh, effect. Uh, shown here, I've just shown two uh, simpler structures, formic acid and butyric. Butyric is just has four carbons, and these have pungent and rotten smells. And then we have the esters, and the esters are formed from this, actually from a carboxyl group that, that is uh, esterified, and the R group represents an aliphatic hydrocarbon, in other words, some more carbons linked to this carbon-oxygen, uh, double oxygen compound, the carboxyl group. And in this case, with this aliphatic hydrocarbon substituted for the hydrogen, 
we get very fruity flavors. Uh, amyl acetate, which is a five carbon, gives banana. Methyl butyrate gives pineapple. And pentyl butyrate gives an apricot uh, uh, aroma. So these are very distinct uh, aromas that are uh, in many plants naturally and, uh, and uh, substituted as, uh, as synthetic chemicals as well. So this completes my uh, discussion of the chemistry of, uh, of the uh, uh, compounds that are involved in the in perfumery and essential oils. And for my next lecture, we'll be talking about the chemistry of more of the natural odorants in nature. Thank you.